Hello and welcome. This is the first video in what will eventually be an entire series on breeding large monitor lizards in captivity. If you're not into monitor lizards and have recently subscribed to my channel because you like the videos I've done on other topics, don't panic as I plan to alternate between uploads for this series on monitors and my usual informational videos on other things. I've been keeping and breeding monitors, as well as watching them out in the field, for quite a number of years, and the idea behind this series is to share as much of that information as I can with other monitor keepers and breeders. The species I am most familiar with is lace monitor, so I'll be using lace monitors as the model for most of the information I provide. But as monitor lizards are a fairly conservative group, from the smallest to the largest, you'll find that much of what I describe applies to all monitors. There will be some differences here and there, and I'll try to mention these when possible. As this series is on breeding monitors rather than keeping them, I'm going to assume that most of you are likely to have a handle on basic monitor lizard care, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on husbandry except where it specifically pertains to breeding them. For now, the most important thing you need to know about how I keep my monitors is that I house them indoors. Most sensible people keep their lace monitors in large outdoor enclosures like these, or they keep small species indoors. But I'm not particularly sensible and keep my adult monitors in this indoor enclosure, which takes up an inordinate amount of my living space. My monitors being housed indoors will influence some of the content of these videos, specifically when I talk about the timing of certain reproductive events, because indoor monitors have access to warm sunny days throughout the breeding season, whereas monitors housed outdoors can be subject to variable weather conditions. So if I say that a particular event happens after a specific number of days, keep in mind that the timing may be different for animals housed outdoors. The two other things you need to know about my enclosure are that it's right next to my sofa, and it's much larger than my TV set. This means that I often spend more time watching the monitors than I do my TV, and that has allowed me to learn a fair bit about them. That close proximity has also helped to get these monitors very habituated to my presence. And to give you an idea of how habituated they are to me, watch how they casually walk into my camera lens while I was recording their mating behavior in this clip. <laughs> The best thing about them being so habituated is that everything is on for show, nothing escapes my notice, and it's the observations I've been making over the years which I'll be sharing with you in this video. I'm going to start off with my first tip. If there's one tool which I found to be absolutely necessary for breeding monitors, it's this, and that is some form of record keeping. These are the journals in which I've been writing down observations for all the years I've been breeding monitors. Everything goes in here. What often seems like just a quirky little behavior the first time you notice it soon becomes a pattern when you see the same thing happening during the next reproductive event and the one after that. Before long, it becomes an important indicator of what's going to happen next, and that's when the fun begins. So what I'm going to be sharing with you in these videos is based on the things I've been writing in these record books over the years. At this stage, I'm planning a 10-part series. Part 1, of course, is the introductory video you're watching right now, and that's just an introduction to the series explaining the format. Part 2 will be about sexing monitors visually, since one usually needs a pair in order to breed them. Part 3 will be modifications to the enclosure specific to breeding, such as providing a nesting area for the female. It'll also include husbandry considerations, such as trying to feed two adults in the same enclosure, which can sometimes be trickier than it sounds. Part 4 covers the start of the reproductive cycle, when the female undergoes what is known as vitellogenesis, or cycling. I'll explain what this is, how to identify it through the female's appearance and behavior, and perhaps even some hints on how to trigger it. Part 5 is the reptile porn part of the series. This is when we get down to the nitty gritty, how monitors mate, what is normal behavior, how often they mate, and how long the mating period usually lasts. Probably not suitable for work unless you work in a zoo, and something you don't want your friends to know you watch anyway, as you just look creepy. Part 6 covers ovulation. This is probably the most poorly understood part of the reproductive cycle, but it's a really important one to recognize, so I'll explain why it is important and how to spot it when it happens. Part 7 is gravidity. Gravid is the appropriate term for a reptile carrying eggs as opposed to pregnant. We'll look at the characteristic appearance and behavior of gravid female monitors. Part 8 is nesting and egg laying, which will cover everything from the female digging the nest hole, laying the eggs, and backfilling the nest. Part 9 is nest defense, which is shown by at least some species of monitor. This is an interesting behavior in itself, but is also one of a number of indicators that your female has laid all of her eggs. So I'll discuss nest defense and its implications. Part 10 is incubation. I'll talk about egg boxes, incubation substrates, and incubators, as well as the development, pipping, and hatching of the eggs themselves. 
If for some reason, maybe because of feedback from you, the viewers, I've decided that I've missed out on important information, I may add another video to this series later. If that's the case, I'll add a part B after one of the numbers and make sure the video is in the right order in the playlist. As mentioned earlier, I'll also take the occasional break from this series to do a video on something else. Not all of my subscribers are into monitors, so I don't want to completely disenfranchise them. This doesn't mean I've stopped the series. Now if you want to be notified of when new videos are posted, please click the subscribe button below the video. It doesn't cost you anything and you'll get a notification when a new video is uploaded. A few other things to note regarding this video series. Given a choice between substance or style, I will always choose substance for this series. What I mean by this is that if I have a poor quality video clip showing an interesting behavior worth observing, I'd rather show it than cut it from the final simply because it makes the video less pretty or entertaining. These videos are meant to be informative rather than pretty. This also means I may use a lot of still images. I've been giving talks on breeding monitors to herpetological societies for many years, so a lot of the material I have is in the form of still photographs taken for use as PowerPoint slides in those talks. Whenever possible, I'll try to use videos to demonstrate something. But if I have better images than video to convey something, I'll use those still images. I apologize if it occasionally looks like one of your Uncle Bob's holiday slideshows, but sometimes a photograph tells a thousand words, and if I think it's an important part of the story, then I'd rather show photographs than nothing at all. I should probably also warn you about the rug. You're going to notice that a lot of the images and videos I'll be showing will have been taken outside the enclosure. I'm going to say right now that pretty much all the video I have of the pair mating will be on the rug in my lounge room. There's a bit of a story behind this, so I may as well tell it now if you'll bear with me. Not long after I built this enclosure, the male got into the habit of being let out of the enclosure to explore. So I've been letting him out of the enclosure for years. I've recently done a video of the routine he does for being let out, called Can You Train a Lizard? I'll put a link in the description to this video. At first the female didn't want to have a bar of me, and stayed inside the enclosure at all times. So for the first few years, all the photographs I have of the mating were taken inside the enclosure. All that changed in October of 2004. It was in the middle of the mating season, and the male was out wandering when the female decided that she wanted to be let out too. I let her out and put her on the tile floor outside the enclosure to see what would happen. The male started to follow her, and before long they were mating on the floor. This is one of the very few photographs I have them mating on the floor. Because shortly after that, the female discovered the rug, and they started mating on that. I decided to just leave them be for a while. I remember it well because the new season of South Park had just started, and they were mating on the rug while I was watching TV. Cartman's face seems particularly appropriate. That was the start of it all. But for the next 10 years or so, the female would mate almost exclusively on the rug. Here's some photographs of the pair on the rug from different reproductive events over the years. I have thousands of photographs like this. They will occasionally mate elsewhere, and even in the enclosure now and then. But for the most part, they prefer the rug. I currently have my male paired with another unrelated female, and she soon followed the same pattern as the previous female, preferring the rug. The downside to them preferring the rug, of course, is that I often come home from work with a pair desperately waiting to be let out. I did say earlier that this is one of the very few photographs I have of the pair mating on the floor. Usually when the male tries to mate with a female on the floor, she'll squirm up from underneath them and head for the rug. But one day, this female was exploring my thongs, or flip-flops if you're an American, crawled under the strap and got stuck. When the male found her like that and tried to mate with her, the rubber sole stopped her from being able to slip out from underneath them. And I end up getting this funny photograph. Whether you like to call them flip-flops or thongs, uh, in this instance it doesn't really matter because she's wearing a flip-flop like a thong. To be forewarned, expect a lot of strange photographs and videos in this series. A lot of them on the rug, on the floor, all sorts of places. Once again, if you're interested in following this series, just click the subscribe button now and let the fun begin.